For today's video, we're going to look at seven shapes made by Homer Lachlan in the 1930s. We're going to start with Ravenna, which comes from 1931. It's a heavily embossed shape. On the border, we have these double rows embossings. And I want to see if we can get, it'll show up in the picture. We have this ribbing, this very fine ribbing on the ball, just below the verge. And we can see it on the baker as well, those fine ribs with this heavy embossed rim. Ravenna is rather special with respect to its hollowware having a flat rim to it. Uh, you generally will not see that on dinnerware, and I think that this is probably the only time you're going to see it on Homer Lachlan. Our bakers, we have um, the flat foot and the little pronounced foot. We saw this in the Century video with the Century bakers. This adds better stabilization, and then you can have the variation with the flat bottom baker. You can also see that in other shapes, namely Virginia Rose. Uh, this is pattern, this has a treatment number, let's see. Pattern RV33 from 1932, Hollyhock Stacal. You can find that on Century and Wells and other shapes. RV1243 is the, the tulips. You can find that on Orleans as well. So Ravenna is a, a decal shape that was made with the light yellow glaze. Orleans comes from 1932, and it's very similar to Ravenna. And we'll, let's look at the plates. Orleans has this wide ribbing going on, and it also has the double rows and double daisies. And one feature that you can use to help tell the difference between Ravenna and Orleans are the little fleur de -lis embossings along the rim. So here again is Ravenna in comparison to Orleans. Now, as you can see, Orleans is made in the art glazes. This is uh, the leaf green. It's marked simply Antique Orleans. There's no mention of Homer Lachlan on the back stamp. No date code. Here's one in French rose. Smaller plate. And it's marked Antique Orleans, made in the USA. Sometimes you'll see them marked just Antique. Uh, you can also find it in rust. So it was made in the first three uh, art glazes. We have a decaled sugar and creamer. The... Uh, Sugar has a lid, but it also there's also a version without a lid. Actually, since we're talking about a sugar, we need to come back to Ravenna for a second. Because most Ravenna sugars you find will not have a lid. But if you find a lid on Ravenna, consider yourself lucky, because those are somewhat rare. And I don't even have one to show you. But Orleans will have uh, a lid on their sugar, and there are also versions that don't have a lid where the handle actually comes up to the, to the rim. The plate in the back has, um, is of course Orleans, it has an underglaze treatment. And I don't know if this is going to show up in the picture or not. But that underglaze treatment um, was applied to whiteware and then given a clear glaze. But ordinarily you will find Orleans with the uh, light yellow glaze. So I don't know if you can tell the difference in the coloring, the lid versus the plate. So we see three different types of treatments here, solid colors, decals, and underglaze. And we'll get more to underglaze later when we start talking about historical America and willow and such. Virginia Rose. This is probably one of the more popular decaled shapes of Homer Lachlan. Uh, this was made, first made in late 1932 and then continued into 33. It was actually introduced to the public in 1933. And as buyers started... Uh, getting Virginia Rose, they were they had to keep modeling pieces. It still wasn't quite ready, um, but it was such an instant seller. And um, it was produced all the way into the 1960s. So this is a long-running shape with hundreds of different decals. Um, Virginia Rose refers to Virginia Rose Wells, and it is the shape name. It is not any particular pattern name. And we see four different patterns here on Virginia Rose. This creamer comes from... 1937. The gravy is 33. That's a rather early piece. And the sugar, 1948. And that, that comes from 33 as well, I believe. Yes. So if you can find a piece that's marked 1932, you have one of the first pieces of Virginia Rose made. So that's a very popular shape. Very good seller for Homer Lachlan. Georgian Ivory's next. And this has a classical English design to it. In the back we have a baker with the uh, Spanish door treatment 
and it has the Georgian dinnerware back stamp. Sometimes Georgian ivory will be marked with a Craftsman back stamp in the uh, pattern name. This is treatment number G48. And we have a sugar and creamer. Neither are marked here. Let's see. No. But this is the original style in the back with the cows. And it's a very tall, small capacity creamer. And so they redesigned both the sugar and creamer for these larger versions. Let's put them down so you can see the difference. So the narrow bodied one, this is actually the first one, and then this is the replacement. By the time you get to Georgian eggshell, you only have the one style. Not a lot of treatments were developed for Georgian ivory. It wasn't that big of a deal, not compared to Virginia Rose at least. Marigold. Marigold comes from 1933. And we have a decaled piece in the back. The treatment number for that is M184, this courting couple silhouette-like decal. Platinum verge and red edge. You can also find this on uh, oven serve. And by the way, speaking of oven serve, oven serve is actually in this mix um, with respect to time frame, but I'm not going to do oven serve today. I'm going to wait for a, a separate video for oven serve because that's mainly uh, kitchenware. Uh, one feature of Marigold are these unusual treatments. You really don't see these on other shapes. So I picked out three sugar bowls. This has under glaze, uh, hand painted designs, and then given a clear glaze. This is marked with a special marigold under glaze back stamp. There's also one for Virginia Rose. And then we have the over glaze version with black accents and gold trim. This comes from 1937. And then we have platinum stamps with red trim. And this comes from 1935. And you'll notice this green glaze piece. This is not Fiesta light green. It's actually a little bit darker. It's a special marigold green that was only used on the marigold shape. I believe it was made for GC Murphy. So marigold is primarily a decal shape, but you will see these really interesting designs uh, pretty much only on marigold. Next is coronet. And this was made towards the end of 1934. In the back we have some hand-painted work under the glaze. Um, you can see the embossing along the rim and then of course this hand-painted work is on the floral embossing along the verge. And then we have decaled pieces with gold trim. Here's the sugar and creamer. And a cup and saucer in melon yellow. There's also a special coronet green glaze but that's pretty rare. I, I don't even have a a piece to show you. I've seen it before, but I've never owned a piece of coronet green. It's not the same as Wells Art Glaze Green. Here's a typical coronet back stamp. Oh, let's get right set up. It's got the crown, coronet, the Homer Lachlan logo, and then USA. Coronet's pretty special in that you can find it with all kinds of treatments. So we've, we've got three of them here. We've got the under underglaze hand painted work, we've got the decals and the solid colors. You can also find underglaze transfers. You can find gold stamps, you can find platinum stamps, you can use, or you can find um, decals with gold stamps and platinum stamps. So just about every decoration that, uh, or every type of decoration Homer Lachlan used at the time ended up on coronet, and I think that's probably the only shape that can make that claim. The last one we're going to look at today is Nautilus Ivory. And this is a rather odd shape. It has uh, the shell ha handles and finials and little shell feet. This was first made in 1935 and surprisingly it was made well into the 50s. Uh, the sugar bowl here with this Rhythm Rose decal comes from 52. So it, probably about 20 year span. Um, the plates are rather simple. It's a plain round rim shape. We do have this little inside line embossed. It's very faint. Um, the casserole is uh, has Antique Shop is the name of the treatment. It was made for Woolworths. It's W138. If you go to the website lowerhollowpark.net and scroll down to the Nautilus section and click on the link, you'll see this uh, decal in more detail. And it actually has a list of the names of the pieces that are featured here. Reed actually noted all those in his uh, journals. And we have a creamer here, uh, again with the little feet, the Nautilus scroll feet. And this is from 1948, made for Cunningham and Pickett. We'll have to do a video on Cunningham and Pickett. That's a whole other subject. So there are your seven shapes. Nautilus Ivory, Coronet, Marigold, 
Georgian Ivory, Virginia Rose, Orleans, and Ravenna from 31 to 35. Now, when I make these videos and I put these shapes together, there's usually a common theme um, that brings them all together. For this group, you might look at them and go, what could these all have in common with one another, other than the fact that they're reed shapes made at Homer Lachlan? Well, the common thread is that none of these shapes had a teapot, which is really strange because every shape we've looked at thus far, starting with Victor and going all the way to Jade, all of them had a teapot. Of course, Old Roman didn't. We always have to mention Old Roman as a little footnote of sorts because it was such a limited shape. It's not that surprising that Ravenna didn't have one. Ravenna's pretty limited in itself. It's very similar to Old Roman in that regard. Orleans actually started off rather limited as well, but eventually it got a covered sugar, it got a covered casserole, it actually got a, a little jug a little bit later at the request of Woolworths. So it was expanded upon as time went on. So not terribly surprising that Orleans didn't have a teapot. Virginia Rose, on the other hand, had a very extensive assortment. And it is somewhat unusual that it didn't get a teapot. Not only didn't it not get a teapot, but one was never picked up for it. I mean, one could have come from Republic easily and fit in with Virginia Rose. There were so many popular patterns in Virginia Rose, VR-128, JJ-59, Every retailer carried Virginia Rose, but no teapot was ever made for Virginia Rose. Now, before I go on, I should say this about Virginia Rose teapots. This photograph comes from the 1960s, and it shows the Imperial Blue Dresden line made for Sheffield that was sold in grocery stores, and you can see um, there's a teapot right here. So a special teapot was made for this line. There were several... Uh, pieces made for this line that did not exist in the standard Virginia Rose shape. We have the coffee pot, we've got the ashtrays, demi-tasse cups and saucers, the mugs that were picked up, a butter dish, um, and then some modifications were made. The nappy and the oatmeal bowls were given rims where before they were more coupe shape. But this is an exception. So if you do find a Virginia Rose teapot, it's going to be this one. You're not going to find one for the decal ware that was made from the 30s all the way through the 60s. You've got four decades worth of Virginia Rose with no teapot, which I never quite understood that. Georgian Ivory, no teapot of course. Marigold, it's really unfortunate that this one did not have a teapot because this is a very pronounced body with loopy handles and a very pronounced finial. Same with Coronet, uh, highly uh, sculptural shape, no teapot. And, of course, Nautilus Ivory. Now, Nautilus Ivory, there are some lines made for Woolworths where uh, the Wells teapot was picked up. So, we do need to mention that. But for the shape itself, there's no teapot. So, the question becomes, why? Why are there no teapots for any of these shapes? The most basic answer, and this comes from a manufacturing standpoint, is that you're only going to produce that which sells. So clearly those at Homer Lachlan felt that the teapot would not sell for these lines. In fact, with respect to Virginia Rose, in Reed's notes, there's a little memo that discusses the development of Virginia Rose and specifically the assortment for Virginia Rose. And there's a little note off to the side that says no teapot for per Marcus Aaron. Uh, so he decided that there was no teapot for Virginia Rose, but again, that really doesn't answer the question why. If we look at the preceding shapes of Noel Trellis, uh, Wells Century, and Jade, of course those all have teapots, but, the, but you don't find very many of them. Um, the Jade teapot is, is next to impossible to find. Century teapots you can find, but they're very desirable, as are Wells. And Noel and Trellis teapots are, are very difficult to find as well. So either those teapots from the, from the late 1920s and early 1930s, or I should say late 1920s to 30 and 31, Either they didn't make a lot of them, or they didn't sell well. Whatever the case it may be, uh, this is purely speculation um, that they didn't sell well, so they didn't make them for the rest of the, the lines. Whatever the case is, you know, they just did not have they, them for these seven shapes. The shape that comes after Nautilus Ivory is Fiesta. And Fiesta makes up for it by having two teapots. And as we move forward, we're going to find that most of the lines that follow do in fact have teapots. Uh, Brittany didn't have one initially, but then it picked one up in 52. Piccadilly didn't have one. Apicure didn't have one, but it did have a coffee pot. So there are going to be exceptions. But for the most part, most of the lines that follow 
do have teapots. But for this non-teapot group of these seven shapes, um, they didn't have one. And that's very, very unfortunate. So if you collect these lines and you want a teapot, you're going to be out of luck. So that's going to be it for today. Next video, I'm not sure when I'm going to do it, but it's going to be on Fiesta. Um, and then we'll just keep moving forward. That's it for today.